Hi guys, welcome back to my channel 32 Happy Teeth. Today we will be discussing different types of incisions in Perio. So let's get started. Basically, there are two types of incisions. One horizontal incision and the other vertical incision. First, we will be discussing about the horizontal incision. Horizontal incision is directed along the margin of the gingiva in a mesial or a distal direction. It is of two types internal bevel incision and the crevicular incision. Let's start with the internal bevel incision. It is also called as the first incision or the reverse bevel incision. Why the first incision? Because it is the initial incision in the reflection of a periodontal flap. And why the reverse bevel? Because its bevel is in a reverse direction from that of the gingivectomy incision. Internal bevel incision is basic to most periodontal flap procedures. It is the incision from which the flap is reflected to expose the underlying bone and root. It has three important objectives. First, it removes the pocket lining. Second, it conserves the relatively uninvolved outer surface of the gingiva, which if apically positioned becomes attached gingiva. That is, if you go for an apical displaced flap, you can use this uninvolved gingiva and make it attached gingiva. Third and the last is, it produces a sharp thin flap margin for adaptation to the bone tooth junction. Internal bevel incision is directed to an area at or near the crest of the bone. You can appreciate the position of the knife in the given diagram. 15C blade is used for the first incision. In this diagram, you can see the position of the knife which is at or near the crest of the bone. This is the diagram of internal bevel incision. The starting point of the internal bevel incision on the gingiva is determined by whether the flap is apically displaced or not displaced. In the given diagram A, you can see the varying locations and angles of the internal bevel incision according to the pockets. And in the given diagram B, you can see the internal bevel incision from an occlusal view. You can also note the scalloped shape of the incision. Now coming to the second type of horizontal incision, which is the crevicular incision. It is also called as the second incision. This incision along with the first incision forms a V-shaped wedge ending at or near the crest of the bone. This wedge of tissue contains most of the inflamed and granulomatous areas that constitute the lateral wall of the pocket as well as the junctional epithelium and the connective tissue fibers that still persist between the bottom of the pocket and the crest of the bone. This incision is carried around the entire tooth. We use beak-shaped 12D blade for this incision. This incision is made from the base of the pocket to the crest of the bone. You can see in the first diagram that the knife is positioned within the gingival sulcus. And in the second diagram, you can see that the knife is pointed at the crest of the bone and the knife is in the gingival sulcus. Now moving on to the other type of incision, which is the interdental incision. It is also called as the third incision. A periosteal elevator is inserted into the first incision and the flap is separated from the bone. The most apical end of the internal bevel incision is exposed and visible. With this axis, we are able to make the third incision or the interdental incision to separate the collar of the gingiva that is left around the tooth. For this incision, we use Orban's knife. This incision is made around the entire teeth around the facial and lingual radicular areas and also the interdental to connect the facial and lingual segments to free the gingiva completely around the tooth. These three incisions allow the removal of the gingiva around the tooth, that is the pocket epithelium and the adjacent granulometrous tissue. A curate or a large scalar U15 or 30 can be used for this purpose. Now moving on to the vertical incision. It is also called as the oblique releasing incisions. It can be used on one or both ends of the horizontal incision, depending on the design and the purpose of the flap. It is used at both ends if the flap is to be apically displaced. Vertical incisions must extend beyond the mucogingival line, reaching the alveolar mucosa to allow for the release of the flap to be displaced. 
in general vertical incisions in the lingual and palatal areas are avoided facial vertical incisions should not be made in the center of an endodontal papilla or over the radicular surface of a tooth it should be made at the line angles of a tooth either to include the papilla in the flap or to avoid it completely in the below diagram in diagram a it is the incorrect method to give vertical incision because it is placed at the center of the endodontal papilla or over the radicular surface whereas in diagram b that is the correct method because it is placed at the line angle of the tooth in this case you can either include the papilla completely or avoid it completely so this was all about incisions this presentation will be made available on my telegram group by the same name that is 32 happy teeth if you want a ppt of this video make sure to check my telegram group you can also visit my facebook page 32 happy teeth or my instagram 32 happy teeth i will provide all the concerned links in the description box i hope you like this video and if you do so please like and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever i post a new video you get a notification otherwise you'll miss it thank you have a good day bye bye